Welcome Academians! Today we will create this awesome digital alarm clock using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. It will have a nice sound alarm feature and I think you can learn a lot from this project. As always you can find the source code in the description below. Without a further ado, let's get started! As you can see we have three files, an HTML, a CSS and a JavaScript file. Let's implement the required HTML markup first. We will start with the standard HTML5 boilerplate template. For this project I will use a font that is similar to the digital clock displays. You can get this font from font.google.com. Its name is Orbitron. Now we tell our HTML to use the style.css stylesheet with the link tag. Now we add the section with the container class that will hold our clock and controls. Inside the container we will create a div with an ID of clock. We will leave it blank for now because we will modify it from JavaScript. Below the clock we will have alarm controls. First we will add an input tag with the name of alarm time and we will set the type to date time local. This way we will have a dialog box where we can select the date and the time when we want our alarm to fire. Below that we will add the controls div which will hold our control buttons. The user will be able to clear and set alarms with these buttons. Please note that they have a common button base class and different set alarm and clear alarm classes. Lastly we will include our index.js file using the script tag. If we open it up we see this odd looking site. So let's add some CSS to prettify it. As usual we will start by removing the browser defined default margins and paddings. I also set the background color here. We will also set border box, box sizing for everything. For our container we will set 100% viewport height and use flexbox to center it vertically and horizontally. For the clock we will use the Orbitron Google font and set its font size to 15 viewport width. This way we will have a responsive font size. To achieve a gradient overlay effect I will use a linear gradient as a background image and set background clip text. Feel free to use a simple color for the text color. Next we will set a little spacing on the controls by defining 16 pixel top margin. In the base button class we will remove the border set the color, the font weight and add some spacing with the padding and margin. We will set a different background color with the set alarm and clear alarm classes. If we save everything and open our site we will see that it got much prettier. Please note that we can't see the clock because we will handle that from JavaScript. So let's get into the JavaScript part. First we will save a reference to our clock div and save it into a display const. We will use this reference to update our site with the current time. Next I create an update time function. We will use this to update our clock div with the current time. We want to update our clock in every second so we have to set an interval to call this function after one second. So we provide 1000 as the second parameter as it described in milliseconds. In our update time function we will create a new date object which will hold the current date and the current time. Then we will extract the hours, minutes and seconds into separate variables using the getHours, getMinutes and getSeconds functions. Lastly we need to update our display divs inner text with the hour, minutes and seconds. I use a template literal string to format it. If we save everything and open up our browser we can see that we have a working clock. It looks a little bit weird because we expect single digit numbers to be prefixed with a leading zero. So let's implement that now. We will create a format time function which receives a time and if the value of time is less than 10 it will append a leading zero. Now we only have to call the format time method with the value of our minutes and seconds. If you save everything and open up our page we see that the leading zeros are appended. Now it's time to implement the sound alarm features. First we will create a new audio object and save it into an audio constant. I will use an online hosted alarm sound but feel free to use any of your choice. Next we will set the loop attribute of the audio object. This way when the sound would end it will replay from the beginning until alarm gets cleared. Next we will create two variables. We initialize bot to null. In the first one we will store the date object of the alarm that the user set 
and in the second one, in the alarm timeout, we store a reference to the set alarm, so we can clear it with that. In the next step, we will save the date and the time provided by the user to start the alarm. For this, we will create a function that will receive a value and assign that value to alarm time. We will call this on the onChange event because we want to keep our variable updated whenever the date time is changed by the user. So whenever the onChange event is fired on the input element, our function will be called to provide the current date time selected by the user we should call our function with this dot value. We can check if it is working correctly by console.logging our alarm time value in the setAlarmTime function. If we save and open up our browser and select a date, we see that the selected date time written to the console. Now it's time to write the setAlarm function. If the user has an alarm time set, then we will perform the set of the alarm. First, we will get the current date by creating a new date object and we create another date object with the time when we should fire the alarm. We will only set the alarm if the time to alarm variable is greater than the current variable, which in dates means that time to alarm is later in time than the current time, because other way it wouldn't make any sense. Now we have to calculate the difference in milliseconds between the two dates. We can do that by calling the getTime method on the date objects and subtract the current from the alarm. Now we have the difference in milliseconds in the timeout variable. What we have to do now is to set a timeout with the calculated milliseconds and play our sound with audio.play. We set the timeout into a variable so we can clear our alarm if the user wants to clear it before the alarm time comes. We also notify the user with successful alarm set with an alert. Now we have to connect it to our button, so open up our HTML file and tell our button that when a click happens on it, it should call our setAlarm function. Now if we open up our page and select the time and date in the future and click on the setAlarm, we see that an alert pops with alarm set. If you wait until the time that you picked, the sound will play. Let's go ahead and implement our clear alarm function. Clear we are served two purposes. If we have a ringing alarm, we can turn it off, or if we set an alarm but changed our mind, we can clear it and it won't fire. First, we will call the pause method on the audio object to stop the sound, and if we had an alarm timeout set, we will call the clear timeout function and clear our saved timeout, and also notify the user with an alert. As you probably guessed it, we have to go to our HTML and set, set this function as an event handler on the clear alarm button. So let's do it now. If we save everything and open up our page and set a future date and wait until that time, we will hear the sound of the alarm. We can also clear it with the clear alarm button. And that's it. You successfully created a digital clock with alarm features using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. I hope you learned something useful and I see you guys in the next video.